let's look at some compound examples, as I said, as something maybe that will be a little bit uh, um, above the level that we looked at in the previous example. So here, you will consider both values or coefficients and variables in looking at the common factor. If you look at the numbers um, in this expression here, 5x squared plus 10x, you will see that between 5 and 10, we do have an HCF there, and the HCF is 5. When you look at the variables x squared and x, again, the HCF there is an x, meaning then the highest common factor at the end of the day is a 5x. Now, 5x squared, this thing here, divided by 5x, that is your highest common factor gives you an x. So this is basically what you do. And this is something that you guys should really be used to now. Um, you can see you are left with an x there. So that's the process, that's the thought process when you take out the highest common factor. I'm emphasizing this because it's going to be very important, fundamental, when we factorize trinomials, something that I know for a fact a whole lot of learners struggle with. Then, I keep my positive sign here. And of course, 10 divided by 5 is a 2. X divided by X is a 1. So I leave it there. Same thing here, guys. You can see 2 as well as P. So in other words, 2P is the highest common factor. 2P squared divided by 2P is a P plus 2P divided by P is a 1. That's about it. Same story, it now starts to get really boring. We now have here six and eight, the highest common factor there, again, is a two. Then a squared and a, the highest common factor is an a. And then six a squared divided by two a, let's see, six divided by two is a three. a squared divided by a is an a, minus, that's the sign between the two terms. Eight divided by two is a four. A divided by A is a 1. So that means 2A into 3A minus 4 is my final answer or solution to this uh, expression. So that being said, guys, you can see using the highest common factor cannot really be the most difficult thing for you. If anything else, this should be where you guys score more marks and get to have some fun. So why don't you go ahead and try these five problems to see if you can really, <clears throat> excuse me, factorize using the highest common factor. Just watch out for number five there. There's a slight catch, of course, if you will not be careful there. And as usual, guys, I leave it to you to try out. Next video, we look at the difference of two squares. Stay tuned.